In this two-part video set, I'm going to challenge the way that you think about camera gear and creativity as a photographer. In fact, I'm going to do my best to convince you that the most important piece of gear that you own is your smartphone. Don't worry, I haven't lost my mind and I promise you, if you've ever felt creatively frustrated as a photographer, you need to watch these videos. Stay tuned. Hey gang, I know you saw the title of this video and are probably thinking that I finally crossed over to the dark side, sold all my Nikon gear, skipped over Sony completely, and decided to become a full-time iPhoneographer. No way! I love my Nikons. I have mad respect for Sony and all of the other brands that are out there, <laughs> even Pentax. So then why would I say that the most important camera that you own is your smartphone? It's simple. It's the camera that you always have with you. Sometimes a little too always, <laughs> but always. Your smartphone possesses the ability to help you improve your understanding of photography, increase your creativity, and in part two of this set, I'll prove to you that it can even dramatically improve the way that you use your DSLR or mirrorless pro cameras. Yeah, with your smartphone. Look, if you've seen any of my previous videos or read my blog articles, you know that I preach the idea of practice. It is impossible to grow and develop your photography skills to the point where you're capable of turning out consistently great photographs without lots and lots of practice. Smartphones allow you to do just that easily without hassle. So of course, I'm not saying that you should ditch your pro cameras and I'm not saying that smartphones are gonna replace pro cameras. I am saying that the best way to improve your ability to see light, create good compositions and make interesting photographs is to always be looking for opportunities to create an interesting image of any kind. And your smartphone makes it easy to do just that. You know, we always hear that phrase that the best camera is the one that you have with you. Actually, it's not. But that quote is a way of saying, learn to work with what you have because the better gear doesn't make better photos unless you know what you're doing as a photographer. It has also been argued that photography is not creative. Indeed, the act of taking a photo that's not creativity. Creativity is coming up with a unique concept and solving a set of problems to be able to take a photo that is different or unique and stands apart from the crowd. During my live streams here on YouTube and on Facebook, I frequently talk about the idea that I take photos practically every single day with my iPhone. Sure, when I was younger, I was the camera geek that took my camera to school, to dinner, to the mall, to pretty much anywhere I went because you never know what amazing photo opportunity could present itself. So I always had a camera handy. But now, who wants to carry that much camera gear around all the time? Hence, the smartphone. Recently, I had a few people call me out about these statements and challenge the idea that I actually take photos or even think through photos every single day. So I decided to provide proof and I started a second Instagram account called Joe Edelman's iPhone. You can find a link to it in the description below. I hope you'll follow me. Time out. I want to make something really clear. I am not a fan of the 365 day photo challenges. I find these challenges to be the equivalent of New Year's resolutions. You know, when you're celebrating and you're drunk, the resolution sounds wonderful. A few days later when you sobered up, you realize just how much work is involved and now the fun is gone, which also means that the creative buzz is squashed. And I won't lie to you, since I made this commitment to prove this to people and not just think about a photo, but shoot a photo, it is work. Fortunately for me, I love my work. So don't start out on a 365 day photo challenge to prove something. It'll take the fun out and kill the creative joy at the same time. Instead, take or think through photos every day because you are passionate about developing your skills and passionate about the process of making cool photographs. What makes this fun for me is that I don't shoot portraits and beauty shots and models with my iPhone. I shoot bright color and abstract and I tend to shoot a lot of macros. In other words, things that don't count professionally. There is no client, there's no money, there's no pressure. There is just creative exploration. It actually takes me back to when I was 11 years old and got my first camera and took pictures of pretty much everything just because I could and I thought it was so cool. So how does this help me as a photographer and how can it help you? Creating a great photograph requires a lot of skills. Regardless of the type or genre of photography, there's the technical side, understanding the gear, 
Then the physics part, where we get into the exposure triangle and the need to understand light and the inverse square law and depth of field. Then there's the creative side that requires us to have unique thoughts and ideas and then solve problems to show things in a different or unique way. That is a pretty long list and it is a list that frequently overwhelms new and young photographers. Also, just like an athlete, because of all the skills that are required to create consistently good photographs, great photographers need to practice and master these skills. And then, just like an athlete, they must practice and use the skills daily in order to keep them sharp and readily available. You know, I've had people ask me, how is doing a macro shot of a leaf with an iPhone going to help you the next time you shoot a portrait in your studio? If I find an interesting leaf, I rarely spend more than five minutes photographing it. But during that time, I'm using my skills and considering composition, lighting, depth of field, and a list of other photographic techniques. Not to mention that I always shoot raw files with my iPhone, so I all have to process that image, considering brightness and contrast and highlights and shadows and saturation and ambiance and color temperature and, well, a lengthy list of items, all of which are things that I have to consider when I shoot that portrait in this studio with my Nikon DSLR. Sometimes I take the photos while I'm walking my dogs. Sometimes I take the photos in a restaurant while I'm waiting for my meal to be served. I take pictures from the back seat of a cab, and especially in airplanes. This is a set of photos that I did while I was particularly bored on a plane. Any idea how I did them? An almost empty cup of soda, an iPad with some bright colored designs in the image gallery, and I held the cup over the iPad and the phone over the cup. No macro lens, just the iPhone. When I teach my college course on creativity, I make all of my students photograph an egg with their smartphones. If you don't know what the big deal about the egg is, be sure to watch this video. There's also a link in the description below. Okay, hopefully I have your attention and I sparked a few ideas, but the moral here isn't just practice and take photos with your smartphone. I promised you I could prove to you how your smartphone can improve all of your photography, even with your expensive pro cameras. That will be in part two along with all the details that I know you want to hear about what my favorite apps are and how I process my smartphone images. So for now, go and pick up that smartphone, or your Sony, or Nikon, or Canon, and yes, even that Pentax, and shoot something, because your best shot, <laughs> it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.